If you watch these videos fully, you will understand how a pro designer handles a project, how each decisions are made and many more knowledge you will get from these videos. This is the part 2 video. Link to the part 1 is available in the description below. So it just replaced the previous image. Also one thing if you can notice the tower is a bit crooked. Let us straighten it a bit and then maybe make it go a little more to the top. Now I'll bring in the logo and think about a place to place it. Now it can be placed right there. Okay, it can be placed right here. It has some, some space. You can even place it here. And then if, if the logo has some text, you can put some text by pulling this bit more to this side so that you will have some space here to put some text of the logo but what i'm thinking is since all these are arranged to the left side what i'm thinking is i'll put the logo up here so let us select the logo put it there maybe i can give white itself and now i don't like the way how this is just empty let us you know make it more look unique or better looking so to achieve professionalism for a post or a design there is an easy trick that is now if you have like less important wordings make sure those wordings are in very very small size so that when the contrast between main headings and those less important ones are huge when the contrast when the ratio gap is huge then it will look more professional so let me show you what i'm talking about so what i will do is i'll create a line right here now i just made it up okay these are not real information so i'm going to give sponsored i'm also going to give here my fake logo Let's make the sponsor, I mean the wording much bigger, this thing are uh, much more aligned. This for now can be white and let's check it out. Now as you can see it doesn't look so good and professional. What I can do is select these to give them a very thin font and also let us select them and make them further more small and this line as well much more smaller little bit up maybe the logo can be a bit smaller much more closer and properly arranged now as you can see when the gap ratio gap this is much bigger this is much smaller this gaps for some reason make it look more professional so that's cool what i'm thinking is let's give it a unique touch of this by changing its color to that same orange now all of a sudden that looks more professional and cool looking another thing is like these three are all together but i feel the gaps are a bit off so they don't have the same gap so i'll just make sure that they have the same gap so that it will all look consistent so let us select this and delete it now as you can see it's much better looking now or else what you could do is just uh, copy the gap which is right here okay this gap and then make sure you give it to this one as well but i don't think i'm going to do that i would like the top gap to be right here for the below one as well also i was thinking now these three uh, looks the same i mean these two i should say this one and this one is separate so this one's color i'm trying okay as designers I have this many experience but I can't pre-think whether certain things will look good or not. Even more professional designers, they have to try and see, they have to experiment. Then after that, their mind will say, okay, let's fix with this, this might look good, so on. So based on that, I'm also feeling this gap can be small, a bit more small, but maybe I will do it finally. But what I was thinking is the color of this, I'm trying to give... Uh, or range out of curiosity how it goes so usually i don't zoom in and have the decision i usually go out zoom in far away then from a far away i will notice uh, look at it and guess is it good looking do i have to change it back so on i think for now i i like the way how these two are separate colors i will leave as it is now the question is how do we add these three uh, locations can we just put it as text or are we supposed to put images 
So both are fine. I think let's put images so it will be much better. So let us, let us copy Niels Yard and then I'm going to go to Google and search for Niels Yard. I'm going to go to images and I'm going to very roughly, very quickly copy this image. Now keep in mind, this is not how you load images into Illustrator. You have to download it properly, but instead I'm just going to press copy image, which is the wrong way of doing, okay? Now let, let us paste it right here. And I'm thinking I will place this image here. But before that, now you need these boxes like how it's in here. So to do that, I can create a square and rotate it 45 degrees. For now, give it white and move it all the way to this corner. Now it doesn't matter if it's not accurately getting attached or not. Don't worry about it. Now let me hold down shift and pull it right here. Now I don't need this black color anymore, so I'll select it and delete it. Now all I have to do is just duplicate this. Remember hold shift so that it will maintain that straight diagonal line. Once you take one copy by holding alt, now, now press control D and control D to take multiple copies or repeat the same step. Let, let me put this image here, what's next? Now I need to pick a good image, but before you do that, like now make sure now if this is the top image whatever that comes below should have a proper contrast between these two now you just have to think right uh, here this one has lots of green so if i put a green image below will it be highly contrasty i'm not sure i think this should be okay is it uh, even this one, I'm thinking this one will be much visible, I guess. But for now, I'm just going to put this. I will not worry. I'll just copy. And for now, I'm just pasting it. But let, let us put and see later. If we don't like it, we can change it. Let me copy the other one. Leighton House Museum. Let us copy this. Leighton House Museum. Maybe this image is good. Or even this, I'm not sure. Let's copy. Let's paste, make it small as well. One more time, this is not how you will load images into Illustrator because when we when you zoom in, you will realize that these are very low quality. I have to mention this tower image that I have picked is also very, very low resolution. That's really bad. Now, how do you determine whether this is going to look bad or not after printing. Very simple. All you have to do is just go to view and then press trim view, which is control one should be here. All you have to do is go to view and then find actual size, which is right here. Control one is the shortcut key. So actual size mean I have pressed actual size. That means now if I take a A4 paper in, into my hand, if I just place it right here, the width is going to be same as the A4 that I'm holding. That means this is going to be the exact font size after I took the print out. So this is a good method to decide whether a font will be readable or not after the printout. So you can decide this very quickly. So when you press Ctrl-1 from this view, see if you can spot those pixels. If so, this is a bad image. For me right now, I can spot some of the pixels. That's really bad. That means this is a bad image. So I should I should be loading a high resolution image than this. Hey guys, this is the end of part two. Part three is already available on my channel. You just have to click the part three video link from the description below. And before you watch the part three, don't forget to like this video.